him us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, 
and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. You nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
of blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Now, the second uh, reading is from Revelation 21 and 22. 21 is 10, 22 through 22 is 10. And in the spirit of one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of the heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord of Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and its Lamb is the Lamb. The Lamb is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will happen, nor anyone who practice abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, and with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and its servants will worship it. They will see with his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light. Of lamp or sun, for Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. Now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Peace. It seems like such a simple concept with such a daunting weight to it. How many times have we prayed for world peace in the church? Or even just peace in our country or our community? But what does that, what does peace really mean? Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines peace as a state of tranquility or quiet or freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. When we think of world peace, we think of an end to hostilities where we all get along. In the 1960s and 70s, peace took on a bigger meaning with the counterculture movement. People in that movement saw peace as a way of life, getting along with one another and living in harmony. From there, it progressed into an idea of fighting inner peace within ourselves. 
There was a Peanuts cartoon once where Lucy says to Charlie Brown, I hate everything. I hate everybody. I hate the whole wide world. Charlie says, I thought, I thought you had inner peace. Lucy replies, I do have inner peace, but I still have outer obnoxiousness. <laughs> Isn't that true? We say we have inner peace, but it doesn't really show. With how things have been in the world in the last couple years, the last couple months even, how can we really see peace around us? Where is the peace in Eastern Europe? as Ukraine is ravaged by a neighboring country that seeks to control it? Where is the peace in western New York as Buffalo is still reeling from the terrible act of racism and hatred? Where is this peace that we hear so much about? Where is this peace that we ask for in the Kyrie at the start of worship? We have become discouraged and disillusioned because all we see is pain suffering and destruction around us and we continue to ask ourselves oh lord how long shall i cry for help and you will not listen or cry to violence and you will not save why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble destruction and violence are before me strife and contention arise so the law becomes slack and justice never prevails we look for peace and find silence. Where is this peace? In our gospel reading for today, we are in the midst of Jesus' farewell address to the Twelve. At this point in the conversation, Jesus is trying to reassure the disciples that even when he is gone, they will not be alone and they should not be afraid. Jesus says that he will be sending the Advocate to help guide them. Unbeknownst to them at this point, the Advocate is not an actual person, but the Holy Spirit, which they receive on Pentecost. I'm not going to spoil that story now, because that would ruin my Pentecost sermon in two weeks. Back to the topic at hand today, though, we are given this vision of peace by Jesus. But this isn't the peace that we know of today. We have a very secular view of that word now, but in Jesus' time it was something completely different. The peace he was referring to was the Hebrew word shalom. The phrase shalom alaykum means peace unto you. This was the first thing Jesus said to his disciples when he appeared to them in the upper room on Easter. It was a greeting to assure them that they were really seeing Jesus and he came to them out of love. Today Jesus is leaving peace with his disciples, but not the generic peace, but his peace. This phrase is derived from the heart of Jesus' life. The peace of Jesus is the all-embracing sphere of his life, his love, and his joy. This is the same peace that St. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi that surpasses all understanding and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In his sermon on our Gospel text, Martin Luther wrote, Christ says, this is to be my farewell. I am going away, and I know of nothing to leave to you in the world. But let my testament and bequest to you be this, peace. Then Christ adds a statement by way of explanation, not as the world gives. It is though he were saying, I know of no greater treasure to leave you than that you may, be, you may fare well. For no one has peace unless he enjoys well-being. Therefore, the Hebrew word for peace means nothing else than well-being. That is what I'm leaving now, I am now leaving behind for you, that you may fare well, or that it may be well with you. It is a very comforting and pleasuring quest that he leaves them. It does not consist of cities and castles, or of silver and gold. It is peace, the greatest treasure in heaven and on earth. That peace from God, that shalom, is the greatest treasure on earth. With that peace, that well-being that Jesus wishes us to have, we will be able to share the good news with everyone around us. When we sing the hymn, When Peace Like a River, the phrase, It is well with my soul, we're really saying, I am at peace. 
I have that phrase sitting on my desk as a daily reminder to be at peace. And to remember that Jesus left all of us with his peace, his shalom. The author of the words for that hymn, Horatio Spafford, wrote the hymn during a rough and tragic point in his life. His wife and four children had set sail for Europe, and Horatio was going to join them at a later date. While en route, the, sh the ship sank in the Atlantic, with Horatio's wife being the only survivor from their family. While en route to meet his wife in Wales, Horatio was summoned by the captain to tell him they were passing over the spot where the original ship sank. Thinking about the children he lost, he sat down and wrote the words of the hymn, reflecting that in that tragedy, he still had the peace of God with him, and that all would be well in his soul. With that shalom, we see what John was shown in his vision in Revelation. We saw last week that John was told that death, crying, and pain were going to be wiped away by God. Today, John is given a vision of what will be coming, what this new Jerusalem will have. Everything is provided for us in this new Jerusalem, the light of God. The light that shone the darkness in John chapter 1 is present and will never be extinguished. It will never be overcome by the darkness. Jesus told his disciples to not let their hearts be troubled and to not be afraid, and we can't either. We are called as the disciples and apostles today to spread the peace that Jesus left with, with us, with everyone, everywhere we go in the world. We say to each other here in church when we pass the peace, saying, peace be with you. It's not just a meaningless phrase. We're continuing to spread the peace, that well-being that Jesus gave to his disciples. We don't reserve sharing the peace with others just, be, just during the good times, because when it, it's when there is pain, suffering, anger, and hurt, when peace is needed the most. This peace is powerful enough to overcome anything the world throws at us. With that peace given to us by Jesus from God, we are given visions of what can be and what will be for us in the world. We need to take that peace from God, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that helps us get us through our darkest points in our life, the peace that is a gift from Jesus and spread it far and wide with everyone, everywhere, every time. It's a gift to be shared, not hoarded. Let us go and share the peace of Christ with the whole world. Amen.
sacrifices, give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to everlasting life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending
who are communing in your seats the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you.
his grace. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of a godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.